Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Gut. Today we're making fried crab and potato cakes. And with that, we're making a burnt lime aioli. It's not a proper aioli, but it's mayonnaise mixed with burnt lime juice and garlic. Fantastic. I found this again, a post on Instagram, the picture looked lovely. That was the shrimp and potato cake, but I'm making a crab and potato cake. Um, I've been wanting to make something with crab for a while. I love crab, although in Switzerland you can only get the frozen kind, but we don't worry too much about that. There's some tricks I'll tell you. But before we have a look at the board, if you're not subscribing to the channel yet, please do me the favor, hit that subscribe button, and check the bell icon. Like that, you get notifications every Tuesday when a new episode is online, so that you don't miss out. But now, let's have a look at the board. We have our potatoes. These are firm, the firm kind. We have our crab meat. As I said, frozen. It's snow crab. And what you need to do when you thaw it out, you need to really press out the liquid, because there's a lot of water in frozen crab. So press it out. This is already pressed, so it's nice and dry. We need lime, garlic for our burnt lime and garlic, uh, burnt lime aioli. Um, we need some coriander, we'll mix that into the crab. For seasoning, we, for the potato cakes, we need nutmeg, salt and pepper. For the crab mix, we're also putting in some sriracha. For the aioli, we're not making our own, uh, we're making QP today. But there's plenty of episodes if you want to see how to make your own mayonnaise, where I make my own mayonnaise. But QP is, uh, is really a good, good one to go for. Some sesame oil for the mayonnaise as well, or for the aioli. Uh, there's not too much prep to do. We need to peel our potatoes. Uh, we need to chop the coriander and grate the garlic. So I will peel the potatoes, and then I'll show you how we do the potatoes after that. Peeled our potatoes. Now I'll just show you quickly the limes. We just cut them, take away the ends, and then cut them down the middle. And you see there, I put a frying pan on, nothing in it. We get it really hot, and then we're gonna burn our limes to get the burnt lime taste. We can already put them in now. And then we get ready for the potatoes. So our potatoes we're going to grate on the big setting. In Switzerland it's called Rösti um, grater. This is kind of a household one, that's why it's so short. It's ideal if it is a bit longer, but this works as well. It just takes a bit longer. So just grate up all of your potatoes. And we'll take a break and I'll show you. Now it's about time to turn them. And then we'll put it back. At the end they should look like that on both sides. Continue grating. There we have it. I think our limes are done as well. Yeah. So we we'll just put them on a plate and they can cool off while we do some other things. So we we'll put our limes to the side. Now either do it like this with a cloth or you can try to do it with your hands but this is easier. And now all we're going to do is squeeze out the liquid of the potatoes because we need them as dry as possible. You can see there's quite a lot still coming out. So squeeze out as much liquid as you can. And we empty our bowl. Now we can put the potatoes, the greater ones, back in. And we can season a bit. A bit of nutmeg. pepper and a 
and a bit of salt. And then we just mix this together. So we can put our potatoes to the side and we'll continue with the crab mix, the filling. Obviously crab for a crab mix. I already chopped the coriander because it's, well, you don't need to learn how to do that. Now we need a little bit of mayo in this to kind of keep it all together. Not too much. And a little bit of spiciness. Again, not too much. And then the easiest is either with your hands or with a fork. Mix this really well all together. It's important to have quite a bit of coriander because otherwise at the end the coriander taste gets a bit lost if you don't have enough. But what I showed you at the beginning, that's plenty for this amount of crap. Now let's check this for salt content. It's good. The heat is also good from the sriracha, it's not overpowering. Just adds a little bit of a hit. Perfect. We'll put this aside as well. Now let's get on with our burnt lime aioli. That's a good, good amount. Half a tablespoon maybe of sesame oil. Now I forgot, did I mention the grated garlic that was in there? But you saw it, I grated it on my Japanese grater that I always use. It was one clove. Let's give this a small taste as well. Perfect. Now for a burnt lime. And you can see, I hope you can see it from on top, This, it becomes really brown, the lime juice. You don't need very much. The rest is kind of there for decoration and to um, squeeze over the, the potato and crab cake. One more taste. Mm. It really doesn't need a lot because it's quite powerful. And when you burn them like this, the juice tends to turn a little bit to the bitter side. So you don't want to overdo it. Maybe a few more drops. And put this to the side. I'm always testing out, so now I'll test something with you. Because when I made this the first time, I made it like this, and it's quite light. And the picture is more of a brown mayonnaise. So I will add a little bit of soy and see what happens. Yeah, it's turning brownish. Let's try it out. That's mm. perfect. Has a sourness, has a saltiness to it, and a nice fatty mayonnaise. Put this in the fridge for now. And it's time to make the potato cakes. Now, for our potato cakes, the easiest way I've figured out how to make them is to put some cling film on your cutting board. And we have our filling and our potatoes. Now it's like almost as making sushi rolls. You want to flatten this out into kind of a square shape. and really press it down hard. You don't want it too thick. And you want it overlapping, so you don't want any holes. And this should be enough. Let's move this so you can see better. And then we grab some of our crab. A 
little bit more. Don't fill it all the way out to the sides because you want to close the sides as well. I think this should be perfect. So let's push this in and then we'll lift. And we kind of pull back and pull back and form it. And this you can take away and we can use it for the next one. The access potato. Roll it over and kind of pull back on it. And we try to close the ends by pushing. You can even use the cling film. Kind of folding in and pushing. And then you roll it over to your hand and there we have the potato cake. The only difficult part sometimes are the ends. So now make, I think we'll probably manage four of these. So make the other three. When we're done, we'll take it from there. Our four potato cakes. Now we're gonna fry them up. I'm only gonna fry one now. The rest is for tonight. But let's move over there and then we'll check the frying out. So a mix of neutral oil and butter. We'll let that get to a temperature. Our pan is hot. Now, I'm frying this on six out of nine, so medium high. Because you don't want it to burn until the potatoes are fully cooked. And the goal, as usual, when we fry things is golden brown. I'm also gonna salt a bit extra on top. And a bit of pepper as well. So we turn it. And we're just crisping it up on each side. And turn it again. It's gonna be really nice and crunchy. Turn it back. Try to get all sides equal. It's just a bit of a patience game. You don't want it to go too fast because then you burn the outside and the inside of the potato or the potatoes on the inside won't be cooked. But if you give it some time, it will be perfect. Crispy on the outside and cooked all the way through. You can also help to form it a bit if you wanna keep it in a round shape. I think we're quite good. Let's see if we can manage to close the ends. Yeah, it's not going to be golden brown, but at least it will be closed. And there we have it, we're pretty much done. We're ready to plate up. Now, as you can see, I already prepared this. Obviously filled some mayo in a bowl and put one of the burnt limes on there. It's just some uh, baking paper on a plate. Now for our potato and crab cake. Now, if you don't have kitchen paper left, which I just realized, you can also use toilet paper. Just to dry off the Access fat. And there we are, our crab and potato cake with burnt lime aioli and some burnt lime. Now, as you can see, I moved it around for the picture. But before we dig into this, if you stuck with me this far, there must have been something you enjoyed about this episode. So do me the huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's just down here, it only takes you a second, but it means the world to me. So please hit it. But now let's dig in. Now, you can eat this with knife and fork, but I enjoy just kind of breaking it apart and dipping. Get a little bit of extra lime juice in there. Mm. This is really
really good. The cor coriander comes through nicely. And if you're not a crab fan, you can also do it with shrimp. Just make the same ingredients, but replace the crab for the shrimp. Mm. Perfect then. From the lime juice, it kind of gives it a freshness, although it's fried and mayonnaise, it really cuts through with this quite strong sourness. But it's a perfect combination. Nicely seasoned. Mm. And a nice crunch to it. Well, that's pretty much for this time. That was fried potato and crab cakes with burnt lime aioli. I hope you enjoyed it. Try it out yourself. Let me know in the comments what you thought if you do. And before you go, if you're not a subscriber yet, do me the favor, support the channel, hit the subscribe button, and check the bell icon. Well, that's it for today. Take care. Bye-bye.